Hi grade 10 students, this is Teacher Lester aka Zerles and I welcome you all to another fun and meaningful learning. Well today, you will be joining me to explore more about the modern arts of the Philippines and this topic is discussed in the third quarter or unit 3 of your module. So without further ado, let's get this discussion started. Our lesson for today is entitled Media-Based Arts and Design in the Philippines. In this topic class, I will be emphasizing media-based arts such as photography, animation, digital media, film, print media, and product and industrial design. So to start with, let us first identify the learning competencies so that we will be guided well with our discussion on what goal we should be targeting on this topic. So we have the learner or you identifies art elements in the various media-based arts in the Philippines, identifies representative artists as well as distinct characteristics of media-based arts and design in the Philippines, describes the characteristics of media-based arts and design in the Philippines, determines the role or function of arts by evaluating their utilization and combination of art elements and principles, and applies different media techniques and processes to communicate ideas, experiences, and stories through the use of software to enhance or animate images like Flash, Movie Maker, Dream Maker, etc. So class, those are our goals for today's discussion. First to discuss is about photography. In its early stages during the late 19th century, it was viewed as a purely technical process that of recording visible images by light action on light sensitive materials. Its very name from Greek photos meaning light and graphos meaning writing states this process literally. The first time the word photography used was in 1839 the year the invention of the photographic process was made public by Sir John Herschel. Let us note that for this topic, we will be talking more about the photographer as artist, the photography as communication, and noteworthy Philippine photographers. Let us first discuss the photographer as artist. So how is the photographer as artist? Focusing a camera at a subject and clicking the shutter is photography as process. Discerning a significant moment or a unique expression, framing it in the camera viewfinder with an eye for composition, and then clicking the shutter is it's a little bit more complicated. So it is a photography as art. What do you think are a photographer may do during a pictorial shoot? First is position lighting, second is modify the lens setting, and third is use filters to create an effect. For today's photographer's class, the process goes even further. They may take the exposed film into a dark room, just like what we see from the movies, or subject the digital images to their photo editing software, just like you do every day when you edit your selfies and groupies and they manipulate the images with photo enhancements. Yes, so we can easily relate to this. Of course, we do almost every day. And then we also have the photography as communication. Uh, let us note that being a modern art form means that photography is now viewed as being more than just beautiful. Next to the printed word, the photographic image is today's most important means of conveying information and ideas expressing emotions even championing poses. There are two distinct characteristics of photography as communication. First is immediacy or a sense of authenticity. An image recorded by a camera has a sense of authenticity because the lens captures image objectively the resulting photograph is regarded as true to life and of the moment. So through photography right now, we can be able to capture the exact moment happening in the world. 
And the second one is detail. The camera takes in every detail of an image. Thus, the photograph has a sense of completeness. Photographs are vital tools in communication fields such as journalism, advertising, education, and even in courts of law. So, through photography and through the details that we can see from the pictures, we can be able to see or observe the story behind what is happening in that particular picture. They have also been used to eloquently speak out against social and political issues. So if you have some concerns, you may use photography as to communicate your ideals and aspirations. Now let us familiarize the noteworthy Philippine photographers. This portion of the topic is kind of interesting. The Philippines has joined the rest of the world in applying the wonders of modern photography to every aspect of life from personal to professional to national to global. With our country's natural beauty, several local photographers have taken on the Philippines and of people as a major focus of their lenses. Among these are George Tapan, John K. Chua, and the last one is Manny Librodo. So what do you think are the works of these photographers? Why they became noteworthy Philippine photographers? What have they done so well? We have the first one which is George Tapan. He is an award-winning travel photographer who has won two Pacific Asia Tourism Association or PATA Gold Awards, an ASEAN Tourism Association Award, and first place in the 2011 National Geographic Photo Contest. And his highly acclaimed work has been published in five travel photography books. So to emphasize, George Tapan is actually a travel photographer. So we can see the beauty of the Philippines through his photographs as we can see in the picture. In the picture on the upper left, we can see the beauty of the sea. And on the upper right, the beauty of the downward view of a mountain. And also in the lower left, we have simplicity of life in rural areas. So based from those photographies, George Tapan really did a great, great job. And the second photographer is John K. Chua. He is best known as an advertising and commercial photographer with over 40 years of experience in this field and numerous local and international awards for his work. He has applied his photo artistry to showcasing the beauty of the Philippines. So just like George Tapan, John K. Chua is also a travel photographer but his photography is for advertising and commercial purposes. So here are John K. Chua's photographies. We have the Snake Island in Palawan on the upper left corner. On the upper right corner we have the El Nido Palawan and also we have the Taal Volcano in Batangas. So as we can see he's really a nationalistic photographer because he tends to feature the beauty of the Philippines through his photography. And the last photographer or noteworthy photographer is Manny Librodo and he is a world-renowned photographer and his captivating photographs have graced numerous UNICEF calendars, commercial work, international magazines, covers of the world's leading photography publications. So as we can see in the next slide, there you see um, in his photography, he emphasizes the details of a human face. We have the faces of natives, the faces of the foreigns, and also the, the face of a child in the lower corner. And I think that's it for photography. And let's now proceed to the next media-based art, which is the film. Let us first define film. Film is also called cinema. Its early name was motion pictures which means moving images. 
it created a new art form that was become a powerful social and economic force and a legacy of the 20th century of the world. Let us note that in this topic, we will emphasize about cinema as a technology-driven art, the collaborative art of filmmaking, film genres, and Philippine filmmakers. Now, I would like to emphasize film as a technology-driven art. Cinema is an art form that came into being because of technological advances. Here is the brief history of film. In the late 1800s, the transition from still photography to serious photography came along with the invention of celluloid strip film. Series photography allowed successive still photos of a moving subject to be captured on a strip of film advancing through a single camera. The need to view these moving images led to the rise of the kinetoscope invented by Thomas Edison in the year 1891 and later a French inventor Leon Bully developed the cinematograph in the year 1892. By 1901, the earliest motion pictures were rapidly progressing from one scene, studio films, to multiple scene narratives filmed outdoors. Driven by these any more advances, the art aspect of filmmaking was born. Now, let us take a close-up tour on Kinetoscope. It is a peep show cabinet with an eye hole through which these earliest movies could be viewed one person at a time, just like what we see from the picture. A motor inside the cabinet moved the film strip along in a loop with an electric bulb providing illumination from beneath. And also, let us take a close-up look on Cinematograph. It is a hand crank camera printer and projector all in one that was lightweight enough to bring outside the studio. Now class, please take note of the collaborative art of filmmaking especially those who wanted to be a director or a producer of movies in the future. Yes, filmmaking because of its Technical complexity involves entire teams of artists, writers, and production experts supported by technicians taking charge of the cameras, lighting equipment, sets, props, costumes, and the like all under the supervision of a film director. Now let us first define film directing. It is the director like the painter and sculptor in traditional art who envisions the final effects of the film on its viewers visually, mentally, and emotionally. Second element of filmmaking is acting. With the live theater as the only form of acting at the time, film actors had to learn express themselves without the exaggerated facial expressions and gestures used on stage. Third is cinematography. Behind the scenes, there was an art of film camera work. This is simply the work of videographer. And then editing. This was joined by film editing, the art of selecting the precise sections of film, then sequencing and joining them to achieve the director's desired visual and emotional effect. So this is kind of technical and really difficult to do. And the last one is production or set design. This created in physical terms through location, scenery, sets, lighting, costumes and props, the mental images that the director had of how each scene should look, what period it should depict, and what atmosphere it should convey. Now let's dive in deeper through film genres. It says here, the public response to motion pictures was immediate and enthusiastic. From makeshift Nickelodeon's movie theaters charging a nickel for entrance in 1904 to luxurious dream palaces for middle-class moviegoers by 1914, public showings of movies were a big hit. With World War I over and the establishment of Hollywood as the center 
of American filmmaking in 1915, the movie industry was on its way to becoming one of the biggest and most influential of the century. With the financial success came the rush to release more and more films in an ever wider variety leading to the many film genres we know today. So film class starting on its earliest periods up to this day was coined into different genres. First is silent films, starring was Chaplin, slapstick comedy, films of Buster Keaton and later Laurel and Hardy. With sound still unavailable, these films relied on purely visual comedy that audiences found hilarious. So it's kinda pantomime, right? Gangster movie genre, horror, fantasy films, this took advantage of the sound technology that was newly available at that time. There was also animated feature films, and then movie musical, the spectacle of theater productions was brought to the movie screen incorporating singing, dancing, and elaborate production numbers enhanced by emerging film techniques. Just like High School Musical, it was my favorite. Um, I mean, musical film during my childhood. And then further developments in cinematic and sound technology led to even more genres just like war and disaster films, westerns or cowboy movies, thrillers or suspense films, historical or biographical films, film epics, and film adaptations of literary classics. The tremendous advances in computer technology in recent decades have fueled futuristic or science fiction films, special effects movies, and let us just give an emphasis of documented films and art films. The difference between the two is a non-fiction genre were made using real-life footage as well as file materials in many cases to present an issue is for documented films and art films mean indie or independent films. Now class, let us learn more about film through exploring the Philippine filmmakers. Beginning with the turbulent 1970s, however, progressive Filipino directors emerged to make movies dealing with current social issues and examining the Filipino character. First was Lino Broca. Examples of his movies were Tinim Bangka Ngunit Kulang, 1974, and Maynila Sama Kukon ng Liwanag, 1975. We also had Mike De Leon. Itim 1976, Sister Estela L 1984, and Bayaning Third World 1991. We also have Ishmael Bernal, Himala 1982, Pet Galiaga on his Oro, Plata Mata 1983, and we also have outstanding female directors of course. First was Loris Gillian, Salome 1981, earned international acclaim at the Toronto International Film Festival, Tanging Yaman 2001, which won Best Picture in the Metro Manila Film Festival. Along with Loris Gillian, we also have Marilu Diaz Sabaya. She created Jose Rizal 1998, perfectly timed for the centennial celebration of Philippine independence. And Muro Ami 1999, which bravely exposed the deadly practice of using child divers to pound for fish in the Philippines' coral reefs. Aside from them, we also have cinema or film directors for big screen right now. We have Mario J. De Los Reyes in his Magnifico, which won for him the Best Director Distinction at the 2003 FAMAS Awards. And then he also had his teleseries, television drama series. And then we also have Brillante Mendoza in his Kinatay or the execution of P, which won for him the Best Director Award at the highly prestigious Cannes Film Festival of 2009. 
So there is so much for film and let us now proceed to animation. Animation class is a method in which pictures are manipulated to appear as moving images. Filipino animators have been involved in the creation of some of the best loved and technically challenging animated feature films produced in the last few years such as Toy Story, The Incredibles, Monsters University, Cars, Finding Nemo, Play, Brave Shrek, Kung Fu Panda, and more. For this topic, we will be talking more about these organizations who provide new career opportunities. These are Animation Council of the Philippines and the Philippine Animation Studio Incorporated or the PASI. So the first organization to discuss that supports the artistic prowess of Filipinos is the Animation Council of the Philippines. It is a non-stock non-profit organization that aims to create an identity for the Philippines within the animation industry, making it one of the preferred sources for animation services worldwide. It works with participating colleges and universities, the TESDA, and other government agencies and local government units to develop animation as a promising career option for Filipinos. In 2013, TESDA and ACPI began offering 2D and 3D animation scholarships to interested high school students or graduates between the ages of 18 and 45. Still, Animation Council of the Philippines has this festival which is called Animahenacion, an annual festival and competition featuring the works of Filipino animators. It grants the following awards annually. First is Outstanding Emerging Artist in Animation Award for Outstanding Young and Fast Rising Cartoonists and Animators in the Country. And the second award is Lifetime Achievement Award. This is for notable animators and other contributors to the Philippine animation industry. And then we also have the second organization which is the Philippine Animation Studio Incorporated or PASI. This was established in 1991 and has since collaborated on numerous animation projects and series with foreign partners. Among these projects have been Captain Flamingo, Producing Parker, Groove High, and Space Heroes Universe. It was topped by a children's entertainment company based in Sydney, Australia and went on to win the Best Animation category in the 2012 Pixel Awards. Earlier class, I just mentioned some notable animations with Filipino contributions internationally and now let us emphasize our very own animations here in the Philippines. First was Urduha in 2008. It is an animated film adaption of the legend Warrior Princess of Pangasinan. It is recognized as the first fully animated Filipino film created by an all-Filipino group of animators. Second is Dayo sa Mundo ng Elementalia, the country's first all-digital full-length animated feature film. The film presents Philippine mythical creators as heartwarming characters in a young boy's adventure and its characters were rendered in 2D animation while the backdrops were created using 3D animation. And last but not the least, we have the RPG Metanoia which is the most recent one. First Filipino full 3D animated film co-produced by Ambient Media. Thaumatrop Animation and Star Cinema in 2010. So that's RPG Metanoia. Class, that's all for animation. And now let's proceed to print media. Print media is a varied landscape of advertising opportunities. This category includes large-scale publications such as newspapers, magazines, journals, books of all kinds, as well as smaller-scale posters, brochures, 
direct mail, flyers, menus, and catalogs. These media offer the ability to present your brand, product, or message to an audience in a way unlike any other venue. Let us note that for this topic, we will be talking about printed materials that involve and showcase Filipino artistry. These are advertising, comic books, and book design and illustration. First to discuss is advertising. Despite the soaring popularity and seemingly limitless possibilities of online advertising and social media, Philippine artists are still called upon to create advertisements that will be physically printed. These appear in newspapers, magazines, posters, brochures, and flyers, each with their specific target readers or readerships and markets and highly specialized approaches for reaching these target groups. Next one are comic books. It is a magazine that presents a serialized story in the form of a comic strip, typically featuring the adventures of a superhero. The popularity of Philippine comics began in the 1920s when Liwayway Magazine started featuring comic strips such as Mga Kabalbalan ni Kenkoy, The Misadventures of Kenkoy in English, created by Tony Velasquez. Tony Velasquez was recognized as the father of Filipino comics, by the way. With the coming of the Americans to the country, local comics were clearly influenced by popular U.S. comics with superheroes as the main characters, resulting in local counterparts such as Darna, a counterpart of Wonder Woman, and Captain Barbell, a counterpart of Superman. Comic series like The Long Running Pugad Baboy, created by Paul Medina Jr., reflects our comments on current political and social issues or on the Filipino character in a humorous way. Along with advertising and comic books, we also have book design and illustration as one of our print media. Book design and illustration is a product of visionary mindsets of progressive Philippine book publishers such as Bookmark, Anvil Publishing, Adarna Books, and Tahanan Books for Young Readers, now Ilaw ng Tahanan. As you can see in the illustration or designs below, we have Ning Ning by Hilda Cordero Fernando, published by Bookmark. And then we also have Gotita the Dragon and Other Stories by Nick Joaquin, published by Anvil Publishing. And then for the next page, we also have Mahabang Mahabang Mahaba by Henaro Goho Cruz, a sample book published by Adarno Books. And we also have Alphabetong Filipino by Nicanor G. Chongson, a book sample of the publication Tahanan Books for Young Readers. And also, a counterpart of print media is the digital media. This is really important because this is what we use usually, especially when we don't want to carry books in our hands and we just want handy materials just like cell phones to read from. And this is digital media. Digital media produces a counterpart of the artistic skills and techniques that go into producing books like those just presented. Books that were originally available in print are being gradually converted to digital format, while new books are now conceptualized, written, designed, and illustrated precisely for this online media. Readers can find, assess, and enjoy these electronic books is via digital media tablets, ebook readers, and other handheld reading materials or devices. We have here the Kobo. It is an ebook reader which features international as well as Philippine titles. And of course, we have the popular Wattpad, a social media based publishing site that serve as communities. 4 millions of budding writers to share their original stories online. So you can also share your own story through Wattpad and you don't need to publish it through printing anymore. 
And of course, the last topic but never the least is innovation in product and industrial design. Another breakthrough arena for Filipino imagination, ingenuity, and innovativeness in recent decades as applied to furniture lighting and interior accessories as well as fashion from hot couture to bridal ensembles to casual wear. For this topic, we will be focusing on several Filipino designers that rise in to superstardom both locally and internationally. We have the first artist or designer, Kenneth Cobonpe. Second is Monique Luwilier. Josie Natori is the third. Raho Laurel is the fourth. The fifth one is Lulu Tangan. And the sixth one is Dita Sandiko Ong. Let us first check out the works of Kenneth Cobonpe. He is from Cebu, a multi-awarded designer and the creative director of Hive, a design and manufacturing facility for designers of interior accessories and lighting. So as we can see in his works, from the pictures below, we have the pictures of chairs, which is kind of creative and different in style. It looks expensive as well. And we also have the samples of his lightings. We also have Monique Luwilier, which is very familiar to me because I'm fan of watching Miss Universe and uh, she is always one of the judges or I don't know if how frequent she's judging for the Miss Universe but Monique Luwilier is also hailing from Cebu, Filipino fashion designer who rose to prominence for her exquisite wedding gowns. Her collections include bridal and uh, bridesmaids dresses ready to wear evening gowns, linens, tableware, stationery, and home fragrances. We also have Josie Natori. He was born in Manila. This Filipino-American fashion designer began her career as an investment banker before she made the dramatic shift to creating her own lines of lingerie, resort and loungewear, as well as semi-formal and casual attire. We also have Raho Laurel, is a much admired Filipino fashion designer with a number of national and international awards. His creations maintain a Filipino sensibility incorporating embroidery, beadwork, and hand-painted prints while also offering the prestige of limited edition pieces. We also have Lulu Tangan, he was known for her fashionable knitwear line since 1985. She had been dubbed the queen of knitwear in the country. And last but not the least, Dita Sandikoong. She advocates the use of local weaving techniques and natural fibers known as the wrap artist of the Philippines for her famous bold colored wraps. As we can see from the pictures below and that's all for the discussion for the topic media based arts and design in the philippines if you have some questions don't be hesitant to message your teacher and also don't be hesitant to search from the internet like in the google if you want to know more about ideas about these uh, topics that are discussed and also i'm giving you the performance task for today's topic which i called what's in a photo these are the instructions applying the elements and principles of art capture places flowers views events inside or outside your home create a simple slideshow or short film using your 5 to 10 photographs and minimum of 3 minutes and maximum of 5 minutes or shall i say you can do minimum of uh, 30 seconds and uh, maximum of 3 minutes yes label each of your photographs with a creative title and explain the purpose of each photo and at the end of the slideshow, explain how the viewers can identify the elements of arts in each photo and how media-based arts affects humanity today. Save and send it to your arts teacher via Google Classroom. And that's all for today's discussion class. 
Thank you so much for listening and not skipping the video. And I just want to say that please do subscribe into my channel uh, for more videos. And also, do not forget to like and share this video to your friends so that they can also learn from this topic. And uh, ring the bell for you to be notified for new uploaded videos on my channel. And this has been Sir Lester saying, let's dream and make it happen so that's all for today and see you all on my next video goodbye great thank you so much